Um, my name is uh, Francisco Dale Rotz. Um, uh, I'm a sergeant in the uh, Army National Guard, North Dakota Army National Guard. I'm with the 188th ADA here in Grand Forks. Um, I'm a team chief, a Sentinel Operator team chief. I'm also a Sentinel, Sentinel Radar Repairer as well. And tell me about when you joined the Guard. Um, well, originally I was a uh, active duty Air Force originally. Uh, I got out, um, I was stationed in Aviano, Italy when I got out. And originally from North Dakota, my parents, my dad's retired Air Force, and so I moved to North Dakota. And I was out for a few months, and I kind of missed being in uniform, and I wanted to try something different. So in uh, 04, I joined the Army National Guard and have been with them ever since. And uh, you deployed? Yep, I deployed um, with John on the Sec 4 mission. Uh, we went to Fort Lewis in 05, and we deployed from 06 to 07. Um, we came back and got deployed again in uh, 2010 on the Sentinel Raid mission, and that was a uh, that was a year long in Afghanistan, and got back just this past December. So when did you guys first meet? When um, you yep, I, when John first came to the unit in 05, I believe, um, we were in Camp Grafton is when I first met him. So during pre-deployment pre training. Well, I kind of, me and my wife, who was with me at the time in Afghanistan as well, um, we both just kind of prayed that everything would be all right for him. And, you know, I talked to his wife online just to get updates every now and then and make sure everything was okay. And, you know, just kind of wished him the best, and, you know, until the rest of us were able to come home. So. At what point did you consider giving him kidney? Well, uh, I thought about it, and I. I asked his wife basically what kind of blood types he would, he would be compatible with and I guess A positive was one of the blood types so it's something I kind of thought about and also my team leader at the time thought about it too and because he's also A positive and, and you know I just it was a pretty easy decision actually for me and I just said hey I just go, I'll go get tested and we'll just kind of go from there. So what did you think when like you said it takes 70, 80 tries? Um, I don't know, I guess that in a way maybe uh, everyone that was praying for him, I guess his prayers were kind of answered, you know, and because I know there are people that are on dialysis for, you know, 10, 20 years, you know, and children as well, you know, and they, they still can't find donors. So I think he was extremely blessed to be able to, you know, first person that was able to get tested is a match for him. <clears throat> Um, to be honest, I don't know, for some reason, I guess I'm really not that nervous about it. I'm just a little apprehensive about the discomfort, you know, but, you know, I'll deal with it as it comes, and, yeah, I pay medication for that, but that's really, really about it, you know, I just deal with each day as it comes, and hopefully recover a little faster, you know, so I can head back to work and do what I need to do, and. What have they told you about the, the surgery and the recovery process as far as the pain and how long it'll take? Um, the surgery, it'll happen in the morning, and it, it should be, it's not a fairly long surgery at all. Um, I'll be in the recovery room, which is right next to the surgical, surgical area. Um, they said anywhere from two to four days at the hospital before I get discharged, so it depends on how fast I recover. And then um, I guess a lot of the discomfort will come from when they have to, I guess they have to inject uh, carbon dioxide in, into my insides and to expand it a bit for operating room. And when they close me up, they obviously they can't get all that stuff out. So a lot of that, that's where a lot of discomfort's going to be just from the, you know, having to make room on the inside with, with the gas, you know, and a lot of the gas will come up and I'll get a lot of discomfort in my shoulders and stuff like that. So, so that's the thing I'm kind of hoping to get past a little, you know, as two days go by quick. Because <laughs> that's what they said just for the first day or two is that's where the most discomfort is and then a little more manageable after that. <laughs> Um, at least, at least three weeks. And are you on, are you limited as to what you can do for a while after Yep, a, a month afterwards I'll be, uh, at least a month I won't be able to lift anything more than 10 pounds.
So, but once I get uh, at the end of a, at the end of three weeks after the surgery, I'll get evaluated. And I'll kind of determine after that, you know, if that needs to be extended past a month or when I can return to work. And, and but they don't foresee me being out any longer than three weeks, and then just being on limited duty for maybe another week or two after that. So. Um, I actually met her in the guard, so okay. um, we were just, uh, I actually knew her younger sister first, who's also in the ADA, and um, I kind of met her through her sister, I guess, and, you know, we were just kind of acquaintances and didn't really talk much, you know, at first, you know, just kind of passing acquaintances, and then, you know, we'd occasionally hang out, and, you know, when the, during drill weekends, a lot of us would go out and to like to go out to eat or to a bar or something like that, you know, and... I just kind of knew her, I kind of got closer to her more over the years, and uh, one day I just thought, what the hell, and I asked her out, so. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married? Um, about two years, so. We just had our, we just had our two-year anniversary just uh, last week, so. Congratulations. Thanks. Do you have any kids? No, not, not, not yet, anyways. <laughs> okay. Um, so what's, I'll probably ask her this, too. Um, yeah, she was, she was nervous and wanted to make sure that this is something I wanted to do, but at the same time supportive, so, and, um, yeah, just between her and my mom asked me, you sure you want to do this all the time? I'm like, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> just, that's not for my best interest, I guess, but. Do you have, uh, similar feelings about the guard family versus like the Air Force family that you came from? Is there similar similarities, differences? Um, yeah, there are similarities. There are people that when I was in the Air Force that I still keep in touch with, that I was close with. Um, one big difference is with, with the guard as opposed to active duty is that um, we don't PCS every so often. You know, we're not moving around. So those people that you're close with, you just get closer to them, you know, and you're working with them and it's just, the cohesion, I think, is a little bit better as opposed to every two or three years or so moving to a new base and having to meet new people and, and stuff like that. So, did that have anything to do with your decision, or would you? I'm assuming your type guy would have given it to uh, basically anybody. But you know that that connection you got in the guard did that enhance your decision to help a fellow buddy? Or? It it did, and I think a lot of it is is on the first deployment. A lot of us became really close on on the sec four deployment because. That was a different kind of mission. You know, we were there as we were there as military police, and we were out uh, doing combat patrols, and we actually did lose a few soldiers. So that was a mission that brought a lot of us that were involved close closer together. So I think that was a big thing right there is that we were we were together doing those kind of missions and, and stuff like that, and there when we lost people and good times and bad times and. <clears throat> Anything stand out? Uh, this guy seems like a pretty easygoing, uh, lovable guy. <laughs> Got any comments on him? Um, yeah, John. He is a he's a pretty he's a pretty easygoing guy. He he's always uh, trying to put a smile on somebody's face. So, and he's always in the past. He's always tried to help people. He's brought people into his home and stuff like that. And he's always trying to help people. And sometimes a lot he does kind of get screwed by by people that he tries to help a lot. You know. So part of me felt that you know it's like well. Maybe somebody should, it's about time somebody actually helped him, you know, for all of his efforts.